Hi, I'm Steve from the Stone Crafting Workshop. Welcome. Today I'm going to do a user review on this. It's the Parkside Air Sandblaster Gun. <laughs> First of all, let's show you what's in the box. There's a set of four plastic nozzles. There's the sandblast gun itself. There's two bottles of blast media. Note I'm saying blast media. And the book of words, which actually you need to read. Before we start, I'm going to issue a health and safety warning. This is not just some box ticking exercise for health and safety, it's serious stuff. On the box, it says air sandblaster gun. Well, that's a misnomer. Rule number one safety with these things is you never use sand. Sand is dangerous stuff when you're blasting. Second rule, when you're using this thing, wear a good face mask and a pair of goggles. A good pair of goggles. You also probably want to wear a hat. <laughs> let's carry on, having, having done the nagging bit, let's carry on and look at the actual gun itself. Uh, on the bottom of the machine, of the tool, there's the airline intake. And you just clip your airline onto that. On the top of the machine is a container, a receiver, and that's where you put the blast media. The blast media supplied with the tool is some form of syntide grit. It's a specially formulated grit for blasting, not sand. And there's a control knob on the top of the, controls the flow of the grit from this container, dropping it into the flow of the air. Uh, from zero, when it obviously is shut, to one when it's fully open. On the front end you've got a ceramic nozzle. You've got this bag, a collection bag, on the bottom uh, with a zip on the back of it. <clears throat> and that's for collecting the media. And you've got a trigger. It is quite literally an on-off trigger. There's no sense of... Um, of controlling the airflow with it unfortunately. The collection bag only works if you're using one of the nozzles supplied with the tool. Two ways of using this particular tool. The first way is as a conventional blasting tool. Um, you put the media in it and you hold the tool several inches away from the surface you want to clean uh, and, and you get a nice big spread pattern and you just spray it like that. The problem with that of course is that you lose a lot of grit and the grit goes everywhere and you're going to have to be togged up with goggles and mask and all your clothing and a hat and you're going to get covered in grit. The second way is specific to this particular blaster which is to hold the nozzle tight to the surface of whatever it is you're blasting and just move it backwards and forwards and hope that the grit is collected in the bag. Let's try both ways. The recommended air pressure, maximum air pressure for this tool is 6.3 bar and I've set my airline at 6 bar and turned it on. I'm gonna fill the tank with media. I'm gonna start by setting the, uh, the flow control at zero, so it's hopefully the safest level. And then I'm going to go outside and I'm going to try blasting some slate. And I'm going to use slate because hopefully you'll see it, you'll see the change from dark grey to light grey as it's blasting. I'm going to try it with and without the nozzle. I'm only going to use this standard sort of flat surface nozzle. I don't think the corner ones are of any use at all personally, having tried them a little bit. Uh, I'm, and I'm going to try it at different distances and I'm going to see if the dust, the grit collection works. This should be fun.
Well, that was right, that was interesting. Uh, what do I think of it? Well, it worked okay with reservations. I didn't think the dust, the grip collection worked particularly well. I'm not sure that I would ever bother with that. With the nozzle pushed back fully and using it a few inches away from the surface of the slate, it worked really well. I mean, it, it would clean paintwork and clean varnish and it would do that easily. This has actually taken quite a bit of the surface of this slate. There is a problem with that, of course. And that's the fact that you're going to lose a lot of your media. Not as much as you might think. By putting that sheet down and then afterwards collecting it all up again, I reckon I only lost about one fifth of the grit that I used. And that's not bad. If you're going to use this outside on big projects, I would use a disposable grit because disposable grits generally are cheaper. And I'd still try and reuse them because I'm mean like that. If I wanted to do inside stuff inside my workshop, I would have to do something different. And perhaps in the next video, I'll show you what I do. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's of some use to you. Uh, if you did enjoy it, <laughs> give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more about this blaster or other parks I taught or about stone engraving, please subscribe. Thank you for watching again. Have a nice day.